Good morning, everyone. Um, we are live here today at the Personal Development G Hangout. We are so glad you took time from your busy schedule to join us today. The Personal Development Book Club Hangout is here to help you take your business and your team members' business to the next level by helping you have a positive mindset and to start thinking, I am a millionaire. Creative visualization is also one of those important processes you need to see yourself as the millionaire you are aspiring to be. So visualize yourself already where you want to go and then come on back to the present and go after your dreams and goals. The one thing you need to do is you need to read every day. You need to listen to audios every day and this will help you with your knowledge that is the what to do and the why. It helps you with your skills, the how to and the desire is the motivation, the want to do. This book club is here to help you change how you think, your mindset, how to grow your mind as well as your business, how to get your team to know, trust and respect you and how to duplicate what works. You don't ever need to reinvent the wheel. So come on and join us and we're going to have an awesome, awesome time today. Thursday we talked about how do we accumulate, how did we accumulate this mountain of debt. Today most people are in terrible financial situation and that's because they blame the credit card companies for making it so easy to get credit as well as the banks. They also blame their parents, their teachers and our employers. They do not want to take responsibility for their financial situations so guess what? They blame everybody else because they want to purchase these big expensive cars and buy these big fancy houses or condos to get where they want to be. They buy the best of the clothes and the jewelry and the shoes and everything else and they don't worry about how they're going to pay it back. You must show the world who you really are. We don't buy things we need with the money we don't have to impress people we don't like. So how to win the war on debt? Get your debt in line is an attitude before it's an action. And you must see what debt for what it is. It's a trap. Patrick Moller said the only problem with debt is how you have is that you have to pay it back. You also need to negotiate your debt with the, with the to lessen your monthly pressure. Most banks and credit card companies would rather lower your interest rate and or fees than to lose you as a customer. When you go into business for yourself, the, um don't use your personal finances to secure a business transaction. If the business fails, then the um, lenders will come after your finances and everything. So you never want to secure a business with your personal finances. And you also, um, if you're having problems in the area of debt, you need to become accountable and or get help. And you need to learn how to track your finances, seek out professional help, and these are people who can help you get Yes. Today we are in chapter 5, we're on page 120 and we are talking about multiple sources of income, what the rich has always known about wealth creation. And I'll start reading today. Ever wonder what wealthy people do that's so different? They find a better way to do something and multiply it. When I write a book and it's resold time and time again in various countries, I have cre cre created the perfect MSI. I do the work once before and paid for it over and over and over again. 
This frees me up to create more income generating projects. Prosperity is available to anyone who chooses it. Wealthy people all have chosen the multiple source of incomes route, also known as MSI. They have money flowing to them from various sources. You will too. Start today on your journey to financial sources. Do it to the MSI way. My mentor has a coaching program to help with this. It's www.ccprogram.com. Why, in a free enterprise economy, would a worker volunteer, voluntarily submit to direction by a corporation instead of selling his own output of services directly to customers in the market? Of course, your PSI, primary source of income, is your job. You might be able to create an MSI from your PSI before you want to get income coming to you from various sources. For example, if you are in, ins in insurance, you will create additional income from this business by giving lectures, training other agents, or doing joint ventures with professionals in other non-competing professions. Creating wealth the MSI way is a relatively easy process if you understand how it works. You learn the process from people who are doing it themselves. What you want is financial independence and financial emotional well-being. Keep reading for a surefire way to do exactly that. Anybody else want to read? I will. Okay. MSI technology, multiple sources of income, MSI is a technology <clears throat> which will permit you to multiply your present income by providing service beyond that which you are presently providing, usually only your primary source of income. You will earn many times what you are presently earning. Additional service, e additional income. MSI is a concept which has been adopted by all very wealthy people. Multiple sources of income is income from multiple sources. MSI is not another job. MSI is not a better job. MSI is not even a job. MSI is a way of adding a new dimension of excitement and fun to your everyday life while becoming very wealthy. And MSI is an idea with which you are in harmony. NMSI is an idea which enables you to provide service to humanity in a lawful manner for which you will be fairly compensated. The compensation you receive from each MSI could be minimal or it could be millions of dollars per year. An MSI should not interfere with nor cause you to jeopardize your position at your primary source of income. The secret to wealth and abundance is never to be afraid to throw your apron on the floor, never be afraid to jump up on top of the table and sing. The most popular myth that I've identified is that hard work is a causative factor that produces wealth, that earning money is inherently unpleasant activity. Phil a lot. On personal note, I have income coming from many places. I created five additional sources of income this past month. Some are doing well and some are actually costing me money at the moment. I decided long ago that having all my eggs in one basket is dumb. I'm always looking for interesting projects in which to invest in ideas to further my vision. Let me share with you what sorts of things I personally am interested in as far as MSIs. You'll want to create your own list. I start with my own life and my own interests. If you are in the financial services, you might want to continue along that line. It doesn't mean you can't or shouldn't consider other venues. MSIs of interest to me are selling informational products or services. I like these because PSI, primary source of income. I like this as one of my source of PSI, primary source of income. They are typically low cost, high margin products and services. They help people, online books, helping people become authors, 
seminars opening up in different countries. Internet. This is where millions will be made. Underdeveloped as of yet, fast-paced, easily duplicated, fun, low entry cost, low maintenance cost, very few people making money, high potential. Time savers. Anything that saves people time will do. Changing people's motor oil at home instead of them going to the garage. At home services such as pickups, catering, personal shopping. Thank you very much, Miss Scarlett. Anybody else want to read? I'll read. Strategy five. Know your, your entrepreneurial propensity to creating MSIs. You can hope to strike, strike it rich like the people in Florida. In an article entitled, Florida Lottery Hits 86 Million, the Associated Press reported by late Friday, the $1 ticket sold a rate of 25 per minute. Or you can do it the same, the same and much more fulfilling way by creating your own destiny with multiple sources of income. Read the statement below. Check which one applies to you. They reflect some. Wait a minute. They reflect some of the more common feelings and characteristics of someone who will do well in creating MSIs, multiple streams of income. Remember, each of these items can be learned and developed over time. Also, you do not have to agree with each statement if you are going to succeed with MSIs, multiple streams of income. Your entrepreneurial profile. Check off which one applies to you today, in the moment, to right now, today. The first one is, when all the facts say go, but a nagging feeling inside says no, you follow the inner feelings. Although honest, you are capable of being ruthless if others pay by devious rules. You don't insist on having total advanced knowledge of any new venture before you enter into it. You prefer to shoulder the final outcome of events alone. You will stick with a job or problem even when you are getting nowhere. You frequently exert so much energy at work that there is little left for play. In deciding on such purchases as stocks, bonds, or real estate, you do not believe that past performance is the most reliable indicator of profit potential. People frequently tell you to slow down or take it easy. Taking risks is what life is all about. You are always striving to be the best, the fastest, the tops, the first, at whatever you do. You know you want success, and there is nothing worse to you than failure. You instinctive, instinctively know what to do when faced with problems. You would deliberately modify your style or opinions in order to achieve your ends. When things go wrong, you feel responsible. You are capable of juggling more than one task at a time. When you feel discouraged or experience setbacks, you redouble your efforts. You sometimes become so involved in your work that you forget everything else. You are a fast-moving person on the go from morning to night. You would like a job that offers variety, even if it were not secure. You have a hard-driving, aggressive personality. You hold that no matter how bad things get, you will still succeed. In games involving money and business, poker or monopoly, and friendly sports wagers, you seldom, win, you seldom need to win. You seem to thrive best when in competition with others. 
You stay on the outlook for people who can promote your advancement. You cannot relax until a project is completely finished. You prefer to follow directions and do what is expected of you. You have difficulty stopping yourself from thinking or talking about work-related issues. You have difficulty starting a new job, starting new jobs or assignments you have never done before. You accept the cultivating you you accept that cultivating your coworkers and bosses is often a necessary part of getting ahead. You have little patience for human ignorance and incompetence. You get much more enjoyment from doing things for your friends and or family than for yourself. Others describe you as a perfectionist. You feel guilty unless you are always doing something productive. You become quickly bored with most things you undertake. You are described by others as a restless person. An owner of a successful business is entitled to a much higher income. Although you realize you have a lot of potential, you have seldom taxed your capacity to the maximum. Your life could be happy without an ever-increasing income. You can move quickly to capitalize on opportunities. You have no qualms about talking, talk, taking what you want in this world. You look after your best interests first. You can live with the reality that you may make two hundred fifty thousand a year. I mean, two hundred fifty thousand one year and lose it all the next year. You can see ways to solve needs and are generally an aware person. You would start your own business even if you were faced with a 50% chance of failure within the first year. It gets on your nerves when you make little mistakes or experience even trivial setbacks. Others sometimes see you complex possessing an irrepressible independent streak. Others, other, others sometimes see you as courageous, ambitious, energetic, op and optimistic. You have a tenant for surviving and excelling when others fail. You respond well to pressure. You have an excellent ability to organize ventures and solve problems. You've got to create a dream. You've got to uphold the dream if you can't go back to the factory or go back to the desk. Eric Burden. Thank you very much, Miss Deborah. Wow, a lot of powerful nuggets we're giving um, through the, the reading that Deborah just did as well as Miss Scarlett. Um, we're going to go back and we're going to talk about um, or mastermind about some of the things that we talked about um, today. Um, let me go back to the beginning. Hold on a second. Um, MSI, multiple sources of income, is always a good thing to not put all your eggs in one basket, as they say. You should have multiple sources of income and you should have one as your primary source of income because if something, if the one stream fails, you always have your primary that you can fall back on. So be careful when you're creating your streams of income. Make sure that it's a reputable company that you do your due diligence, means research, before you go out and um, create your income. Um, and the, multi the multiple sources of income is a good way for you to create your not, I mean, to be able to leave your nine to five if you want to be online or like the, like the reading, like we read today, use, um, some of the features of your job to create another source of income.
I thought that was pretty powerful. If you are an insurance agent, you go out and you do training on it or you educate the other insurance agents. So you could play off of the job that you currently have if you're in finance or you work at a bank. You can create a stream of income by helping the um, um, consumer get out of debt. Help them create a plan that will help them to get out of debt. Um, I think that's pretty, pretty powerful. Did anybody else want to comment on anything that um, we I just talked about? Yeah, Sharon. Um, as I was reading, as you were reading, rather, um, what you just read, I was thinking about Robert Kiyosaki and how he, him and Donald Trump said that if they had to start all over again, and these are multi-million dollar people, they said that they would start off in the network marketing industry. Now, Robert Kiyosaki has, you know, the rich dad, poor dad uh, syndrome where he explains, you know, the poor dad went along with traditional American ways and thinkings. And his rich dad had a millionaire mindset, a global village mindset. He wanted. He saw money as a tool, where we are not taught to see money as a tool. Rich people do not spend money carelessly. Mm -hmm. They are always looking for ways for their money to make them more money. Mm -hmm. Those that are on the uh, journey of success of wealth are wealth creators. They're opportunists. So they're always, no matter where they are, you could be the brokest person in the United States. And if you took $10, this is just an example. <clears throat> I was telling some kids, they wanted to know why they had to be 14 to get a job. <laughs> and I said, well, the, it's based on laws. I said, but you can still make money. Mm -hmm. And I told them, I tell you what you do. Go borrow $10 from your parents. Go find the cheapest case of water. Mm-hmm. Borrow your parents' cooler mm -hmm. and buy a bag of ice and stand on a public corner and sell bottles of water for a dollar. If you sold one case of, of water that had 30 bottles in it, you just made $30. Mm -hmm. If you sold two cases, you just made $60. And in the summer, it's always hot and it'd be readily available at a street corner to sell someone a bottle of water for a dollar, which is actually cheaper than if they went in the store to pay a dollar twenty-nine. You're giving a service, and you're saving them money. Well, these three little boys, and one of them used to cut my grass. I was like, I never would have thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> and he took that idea and ran with it. And in one summer, he was able to put together five thousand dollars. Wow. So. It doesn't matter where you are, you just have to be a wealth creator and create something that is, you know, be creative in what you can do where you are. Because for a 13-year-old to create $5,000 in one summer, some people don't make that in a year working a restaurant job. Um, you don't have all your eggs in one basket because this is the other topic that you just read on. What happens is this. You want to have sustainability to your cash flow. Cash flow is money that flows to you. So if you're working a job <clears throat> and that's the only stream of income that you're depending upon in your household, what you're going to run into is when they give you that pink ticket and say, we don't need you anymore or we're downsizing, mm -hmm. you go into a panic mode. And when you're in a panic mode, you do desperate things and desperate things is what gets you in trouble you start using credit cards if you got any you start you know you, you, you start not you're not prepared and millionaire mindset people are always prepared and never so they don't have to be in a stress mode to pay their necessity bills so that so that's a biggie um, by having an extra stream of income if you're not employed, you should have several streams of income. 
and they should complement each other. That doesn't mean jump in a bunch of programs. That means look at the one you're working and see how many streams can you pull out of that one you're working to create additional income. Most MLM companies allow you to retail your product as well as wholesale it from your site, as well as have signups that join you as a team. So that's three streams of income with one company. Mm -hmm. But you got to get off the, the couch, turn the, the remote off, and put a, you know, dress up nice and go out there and network business to business because you never know what you can come out of that with uh, I won't be specific about companies, but I did that and set up uh, bars all in a bunch of beauty shops, and it, it, that that money st still streams to me. But I'm not with the, you know, I'm not with that company anymore. I'm retailing to them. Uh, it's just using what you have, and what you have, you can create more income. Uh, you have hundreds of dollars sitting around your house and don't even realize it. It's just being creative with what you, where you are and as you begin to move forward with where you are, you'll create additional ways of doing what you do, what you're created to do. Thanks, Cher. Wow, Deborah, that was awesome. I like the story about the um, young man that you um, told about the take a $10 and go buy a bottle of water, a case of water, and sell it on the corner for a dollar. And look, like you said, look at what skills he's developing at a very young age, that he can do whatever he set his mind to do. So that, that was very, very powerful, Deborah, and I thank you very, very much for um, sharing that um, information as well as those nuggets. I hope y'all caught that, so if your kids want to... Um, Make some money during the summer. It's coming up. Um, that's an excellent way for them to uh, create some some income. Anybody Sharon, else? Sharon, yeah, I'd like to come out for a minute. Can you hear me okay? Yes, ma'am. Um, Deborah, you and I are like so much alike. It's unbelievable. This is that book that Deborah was talking about, Why We Want You Rich by Robert Kiyosaki and um, <laughs> Trump. And... You know, one of the things that during my season when I was down and not um, doing anything with business, you know, I kind of like stopped and I was in my uh, depressed season, I took the opportunity to read this book. And this book is what caused me to, um, it actually confirmed that I was okay by doing an internet marketing business because, you know, I was kind of like in between, like, should I really do internet marketing or should... I shouldn't say internet because he says he doesn't say internet marketing. He says network marketing, and basically, you know, because so many people are against network marketing, but it is it is a low cost startup business, and it's it is a great way to create a stream of income. So that's one thing that I wanted to anybody, you know, if, if you're looking for a book to read, this is definitely a good book to read. Well, and will give you some great direction on starting in uh, multi level marketing. Um, one of the other things that Deborah mentioned was that you know you can create multiple streams in one company. What I see a lot of people do, and um, that is they go and try to create multiple streams in different multi-level marketing companies. Um, if you can do that without, especially if you're in social media, if you're on social media and you're doing that, you're you know you have like two or three different companies out here. What you're doing is you're confusing your audience. You're confusing those who are following you. So I don't recommend it. I mean, if you do have another multiple stream, have it like whether you're going to have it on a blog somewhere on the sidebar or if you're just driving traffic to it. But I wouldn't be promoting, you know, different opportunities all the time because I used to do that and the people that were following me were confused. Like, Rich, I don't know what you're doing anymore. So... You know, that's that would be my nugget. I, I love multiple streams of income, and I think it's a great idea, but you really, really, really got to be careful about how you present that, especially when you're on social media. Um, and the last thing I would say is to, um, <clears throat> you know, in that, you know, find a company that will allow you to do that. You know, I mean, you could actually, you just have to think about it. If you were in a health and wellness company, 
and you you have the knowledge about nutrition because I was there. I mean, it was like we're just like the nutrition buff, you know. Um, you can write your own book. You know, that's another stream. As you are there learning, go write a book about it. You know, that's another stream of income. Um, many things you can do. I mean, in the company that we're in, I mean, we're we're like, and we have like, in one company that we're in, we have one, two, maybe four streams of income. There might be five in there. So in one company, you can find all. If you can find that many, it's a great, great opportunity to start at. And then after you have become successful in that, then venture off into something else. But most people, they do is they come online, they get involved in one thing and then another, and the next thing you know, they're overwhelmed. And then they say it doesn't. they're going to quit, it doesn't work. So those are my thoughts. Um, just wanted to share those with you, Sharon, and thank you for the opportunity. Wow, thank you for all the golden nuggets you two ladies have given. Um, I recommend reading that book. I haven't read it yet, Miss Rachel, but I, I think that sounds like a good book uh, to read. Thank you, ladies, very, very much. Um, the one other, another thing we talked about is a personal note. Um, you need to sit down and think about what you want to do and what you like and what your interests are and make a list of the things that you would like to do. Um, a good example of the MS, the multiple streams of income interest to me, um, like some of them for me, informational products or services. And I like these because of my, to be my primary source of income. They're, you know, you want to get something that has a low um, startup cost but have high margin products and services. And the one thing when you're creating your list, make sure that the the business you're getting in help others. Um, and a, a informational books online also help others. And it, it, do you have in, um, seminars or webinars or anything that you can open up to other countries? Do that as well because that will get more people into your business. You need to think outside of the box, outside of your comfort zone. And then when you do the internet, you do the same thing. You write down a list of items that you want to do on the internet. There is and will be millions uh, made out there. You could be one of them, but you must remain focused and stay on course or you follow your roadmap to achieve those millions. Like Rachel said, you know, people buy program after program after program after program. Stop. S sit down and think about what is best for you. Don't be flying all over, you know, to different places because you will get overwhelmed. You will not know where to, how to focus because you say, I got to do this, I got to do that. Stay in one place, stay on course, and then you will um, find um, the way to go. Um, a lot of people, you know, once they find out that they are focused and on course, they will achieve their dreams and goals. And a positive mindset will help you to stay focused. It will help you to follow the road map that you have created to travel down the road to success. A positive mindset will allow you to have the ability to visualize you achieving those dreams and goals. And you know how to get there? It's through hard work. It's not from um, signing up from program after program after program. That's not how to do it. Unless you're a really fast think, I mean, learner, then maybe you can do it that way. But if not, stay on course. And you also want to find things that are time savers that will help you to um, get more, be more productive in less time. Our training on Friday, which was daily method of operations, was an excellent way. Um, Deborah showed us how to get, how to save time. And if you watch, the video is out there, you can go watch it to show you how to set up your daily MO so that you will be a time saver. Okay. Anybody else have anything they want to comment on thus far? Yeah, Sharon. Um, 
I want to piggyback off of what you said. A lot of people don't seem to understand what stay focused means. In order for you to be focused, you have to know what it is that you're wanting. Coming to the internet and just jumping out there and not really doing the work of you. And that means knowing what you like. If you just are a victim of mass distraction, uh, you know, there is a ton of information thrown at people daily, hourly. Take it as a grain of salt. Just say, okay, if you like, you see something you like, bookmark it. Don't re don't react emotionally by jumping in and say, yeah, I want to do this, because the first impression is always going to lead you down a path of failure if you haven't done the work. And that means I'm not talking about the program itself. I'm talking about you. If you haven't done your, the work on you to understand where you're coming from, and it. It, it sounds like I'm going to be wasting time, but it is the best time you will ever spend to get started of being online. To know what you want, uh, what do you, what do you, you have to gain knowledge in that business completely. Uh, if you go in health and wellness and you've been living in, you know, the drive-throughs, you don't know nothing about health and wellness. You've got to go out there and gather the information. Educate yourself about health and wellness, eating healthier, uh, proper foods, you know, to do. And this will educate you to the point where you'll be able to write that book. You'll be able to do those lectures. You'll be able to choose a company that complements who you are. Um, and that just takes focus. That takes work, doing the work on you, and then transferring you into what you're going into. Um, being focused is easily not to know you're not focused because you've only been programmed to be an employee. You've been taught through education and all of that just to be an employee. You're coming from that mindset into an uh, entrepreneurial mindset and an entrepreneur that wants to be a millionaire. You don't know that information, so you have to gather it, like attending a hangout like this, getting the information, committing that hour to yourself. And as each day go by, those little nuggets will pile up. It's like building your own house. You lay one brick, you can't move in it because the rest of the house ain't finished. That's focus. When it comes to multiple stream, like I said, that one business can be your multiple streams based on your ability, not multiple programs. And you brand yourself, like Rachel said, you brand yourself to that. If you're, if you're an individual that's in health and wellness, then brand yourself as a health and wellness coach, a health and wellness uh, you know, educator uh, that people can come to and ask questions about their diseases or, or their lack of knowledge so you can be out there and deliver value. Uh, the, the like I said, the multiple streams can come out of that one company by being willing to go out the door and retail as well as build a team that's two streams out of one company. Most people join the company and they think it's all going to be behind their team members, but you have to be an example for your team members. If you're not doing it, don't expect them to do it because they're not. They're going to see what you're doing and then they're going to duplicate you because they follow you. Not the company, they follow you into that company. So the best sponsor is someone that's showing example. Thanks, Chair. Wow. <laughs> always bring value to this book club. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Deborah. You do a, you just don't know. Um, now we want to talk about your entrepreneur role um, or profile. Um, like Deborah was saying, being an entrepreneur is different than being an employee. As an employee, you do whatever the lead or your supervisor tells you to do. 
because you are under their guidance. But when you're an entrepreneur, the road is wide open because you will be in charge of your multi-million dollar business. You will be responsible for making sure that you have all of the tools, all of the educational items, all of the information that so that your team can grow and prosper as well. But they're going to, like Deborah said, they're going to look at you for what you bring to the table. And that will help them to build trust, respect, and honor you. And you want, you also need to be the three C's. You need to be coachable. And you need to be committed. And you need to be consistent. If you're those three things, because that will help you with your mindset. That will help you to grow. And that will help you to develop and become that successful online or offline entrepreneur you're striving to be. So you need to be and then you also need to be teachable and which the same thing as coachable and you need to once you learn something you need to implement it and once you implement it you need to teach others how to do the same thing you are doing because if everyone is learning implementing and teaching then look at how your team is going to grow and you're going to be a good leader because you have your team looking to you for guidance. Then once you build your team, they're going to be looking to you for guidance. So it's like a trickle effect. So you need to put yourself in the right place. You need to put yourself in the right mindset. You need to stay focused. You need to be committed and consistent, and you will achieve your dreams and goals okay anything anybody else want to add okay um your entrepreneur role um profile I'm sorry um we're not gonna read through all of this all of these um but um the ones that um kind of like stuck with me is when all of the facts say go but a nagging feeling inside say no you follow your inner feeling there are some programs out there that if you go and sign up for them and it don't feel quite right then go with your inner feeling because there's something there that's telling you this is not right for you everybody else might be making millions in it but this for some reason don't feel right to you then you know you need to abide by your inner feeling. Um, you will stick with a problem or job even when you are getting nowhere. Now I don't do that because if you keep on doing the same thing over and over and over and getting the same result then something needs to change your mindset or what you are doing. Um, People frequently tell you to slow, to slow down or take it easy. Yeah, I hear that from my husband a lot. He said, you need to slow down and you need to take it easy. I'm always trying to um, get out there and, and do things that, you know, make me feel better. But, you know, I need to rem remember I need to step back and take it easy and go slow and then I will get to where I need to be. Um, you instinctively know what to do when faced with problems. Um, sometimes, sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. Um, but that one stuck out at me. Um, you sometimes become so involved in your work that you forget everything else. Now that's a problem for me. Um, I can become involved in a project. Um, I'm working on a, a project right now um, for an organization and I'm so focused on getting the task done I forget everything because information is just flowing and I want to get it done and I want to get it done now so you know I stayed up for over 24 hours over the weekend um, 
trying to finish the project didn't finish but I'm a lot closer to being finished and the information just flowed it was awesome um, yes I have difficulty starting a new job or assignment that I had never done before good example starting a hangout or being the leader of a hangout but Miss Rachel through her encouragement I'm out here and thank you very much for that Miss Rachel um, any other comments or concern as we bring this hangout to um, a close hey Sharon I'll jump out for a minute here um, <clears throat> so you know you're talking about you know your entrepreneurial profile you know, and, and a lot of the qualities that was read on this list tells you that you really had the, um, you have the ability or the desire to be an entrepreneur. And I thought it was pretty powerful, some of the things it brought out. Some of the things that concern me, though, you know, I mean, I'm always the concerned person. So, you know, what I would say is, you know, in your entrepreneurship journey, if you have a family, if you have a marriage, if you, anything of that nature, Make sure you're balancing your time. Um, many people, they come out and they don't do that. And next thing you know, they're in divorce court. And they don't know their children. They are, you know, they, they pretty much have lost everything. And they, they've achieved the success. They've made the money. But the, the main reason why they were working is no longer there. So I think it's really, really important that, you know, yes, us as, you know, we as entrepreneurs, we have a tendency to lose track of all those things, but it's really, really important that you know mm -hmm. while we're building our multiple streams of income, that we not forget about um, the people that we love and the reason why we're doing this. Back to you, Sharon. Very, 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 very true, Rachel. I, I agree with you 110 percent, and I'm glad I don't do that all the time. Because I would be one of those probably in divorce school. Hey, but, but you know what? I, I did the same thing last night. I said, I got to get it done, and I'm not going to bed until I do it. So mm -hmm. I actually finished at 5.30 this morning. That's why I'm like, Sharon, do the hangout. I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> we tell you guys, you know, to, to be mindful of family and friends and stuff like that. But sometimes when you get really, really focused, like Rachel and I did this weekend, it's just ironic that both of us did it the same weekend, um, that, you know, you need to, I needed to get to a point on my project, and I talked to my husband about it. He said, you do what you got to do. So, you know, if you're going to do something like that, you need to talk it over with your family to make sure that it's okay so that you know you won't end up in divorce court or or with other problems or issues I was determined to finish oh, okay it couldn't finish but you know to get it done but you gotta be mindful of your family that is absolutely correct anybody else wanna come out yeah um, going back to Robert Kiyosaki and Donald Trump okay the two differences, and, and I don't know why, but many people misconstrued the titles Internet Marketer and Network Marketer. An Internet Marketer is someone that markets product on the Internet. Mm -hmm. uh, Ebooks, PLRs, uh, workshops, whatever. That's an Internet Marketer. A Network Marketer is, is you. You are your business. Mm -hmm and you are a social magnet on and offline bringing results to people to problems that they have. Um, it took a long time for me to understand the difference between the two because I just thought they both meant the same thing but they don't. There is a defining line as to what you brand yourself. If you're a network marketer you're already doing it and you're not getting paid for it. If you, if people that come that don't even realize that they're networking with, with others just on the basis of like. If you go to the movies and you like a movie and you call your friends and say, boy, I saw that movie and I loved it. And then your friends, on the basis of your opinion, decide to go to the movie and see that movie. 
my question to you is this. You shared valuable information to those individuals, but how much money did the movie theater send you when you sent your friends to the theater to see the movie mm -hmm. for doing it? Nothing. So it's not that you can't be a network marketer. Once you get the concept of it, you just be a sociable individual throughout your journey, connecting with people of like mind that are, you know, you don't, you want to connect to people that are going to be doers. Because people that are sitting on the sideline waiting for someone else to do it for them, all you're going to do is waste your time and you're going to enable them to not do nothing. Mm -hmm. So connect to doers. As a network marketer, you're connecting to doers and you'll build a nice, strong team. Because remember, they didn't say that line for nothing. You're, you're, you're as strong as your weakest link. It's some weak links in there and it's going to break and somewhere along the way you're going to be refixing something that you already thought you had fixed. So I just wanted to break that down for you, Sharon. Thank you very much, Deborah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, the, the one thing that from all of this you need to get is you need to build a solid, strong foundation for your business. And once you build that strong, solid foundation, then you will be able to um, promote that and grow it. And the way you do that is you must get the knowledge, like I stated at the beginning, because knowledge is the what to do. Sorry about that. Knowledge is the what to do and the why. Skill is the how to do and the desire um, and, and the motivation, the what to do. And the skill is the how to do. And once you have the knowledge, the skill, and the desire, there's nothing that you cannot achieve. So on that note, I would like to bring this hangout to a close, and I want to thank each and every one for attendance. Oh, excuse me. Do we have any questions um, out there, Deborah? Let me check. I forgot to kick that up. Hold on. Thank you. It's loading now. Oh, yes. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. Some of them are spam. Let's see. Uh, no. All of them are spam. Somebody. I can't even understand the, okay. well, the languages, but no, I'm sorry. We don't have any questions. All righty. Well, he asked, how are y'all doing? So um, we are doing we fine. <laughs> and we thank you for um, attending our hangout. And thank if this you. has been a value... Yeah. Sharon. Yes. Oh wow, I got someone um oh man, they're saying they can't see anything. I'm surprised. Oh man, the wrong oh. Okay, so oh man. Okay, that's all right, because they're saying they couldn't see anything, but I'm just now seeing this. Um okay. You can keep going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what happened was the iframe was put in wrong. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But if they were on Google Plus, and we have some people on Google Plus uh, that was viewing it, they did get to view it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Hang out. Uh, yeah. Okay, Sharon, you can go ahead and finish up. Okay. Um, I would like to thank everyone for um, attending this Hangout today. And if we have provided any value um, to you at all and you would like to connect with one of us, um, just click the link. Um, at, if, if you're on Google+, Plus, I think the link is down there. If you're on 20 to social, just click the green button um, and you can connect with any one of us. If this has um, provided value to you, like, comment, and share. And um, we, we are happy to... to have been able to come here to with you today. Um, everyone have an absolutely wonderful re weekend. And if you are ready to take your business to new height, God is ready to take you there too. So you must follow your plan, your guidelines, um, your roadmap to success. And we will see you at the top. Thank you very much.
Oh, Sharon, hold on a second. I got to close out. I'm sorry. I thought you was doing that.